Hi guys and welcome to Fix Savers. Today we're bringing you another video in our pool table series. And we're going to be looking at the technicalities of marking a pool table for snooker. It may initially sound like quite a simple idea, but there are some factors you may not have considered. So if you're consider marking your pool table to be ready to play snooker, this is definitely a video you should watch. So the first thing we need to consider is the size of the table. A full size snooker table is a lot larger than a full size pool table. A professional snooker table is 12 feet by 6 feet. By contrast, an American or Canadian tournament size full size pool table is 9 feet by 4.5 feet. Additionally, pool tables also come in other common sizes including 8 feet and 7 feet, all of which we will cover in this video. So if you look at the size of these tables side by side, you can see that there's a massive difference in the actual playing surface of these tables. So first of all, we need to understand how the measurement of a pool table works. For example, on a nine foot pool table, the playing surface is not actually nine feet. Now, if we look here, for example, we have a standard nine foot pool table, but the actual physical measurements of that table, including all of the rails, if you, if you physically measured the table, it wouldn't necessarily measure nine feet because the size of the rails can vary depending on the design of the pool table. It's actually the slate that will measure nine feet or very, very close to, uh, but obviously you can't see that when all the rails are installed. So the size of a pool table is actually based upon its playing surface. And the playing surface is measured from between the cushions. So the playing surface area is considerably smaller than the actual physical size of the pool table. And here's a list for your reference of the most common pool table sizes and their standard playing surface. And then the next thing we need to consider is that a pool ball is considerably larger than a snooker ball. A standard American pool ball is two and one quarter inches compared to a snooker ball at two and one sixteenth inches. But ideally you don't want to reduce the size of the balls that you play with because they will be relative to the size of your pockets. There are many manufacturers that produce snooker balls in a two and one quarter inch size specifically to be used on pool tables. So that's an important factor to bear in mind as you move on through the process is that on your pool table you'll be using larger balls than they use on a snooker table but you have far less playing surface. So the scale between playing surface and balls will never be the same on a pool table to a full size snooker table. So next let's take a quick look at the target inlays which you will find on a normal pool table. These can often be round or diamond in shape and they are dotted all the way around the outside of the pool table as shown here. So if you start from the head of the table which is the end that you typically break from, the second set of targets actually give us what's called the head string. This is the line that should be marked on all standard pool tables. And then for the sake of reference, if we went on and joined up all of the other targets with straight lines, you can see it will give us a perfectly even grid around the full playing surface of the table. We can then use this grid to easily work out the positions for your header spot, that's where you break from, and also your footer spot, which have been enlarged in this image just for illustration purposes. The header spot is typically where you break from, and the footer spot is where the number one ball is placed when you rack your pool balls. So looking now at the snooker table, we have additional markings that are required. We have markings that are required for green, brown, yellow, blue, pink, and black balls. In addition to those spots, you will also see a semicircle which comes off of the rear of your head string, also called your balk line. Uh, this is also referred to as the D zone or zone D. And so the challenge is to make our pool table markings line up as accurately as possible with a snooker table. So first let's take a look at the easy ones. The blue is easy because that is in the dead centre of the table. Additionally the brown spot is also easy because that is in the centre of the bulk line which would be the same as your head spot or header spot. The pink is also relatively easy because that is placed dead centre in the lower half of the table. You can see the white uh, square here. Uh, for reference, that is the lower half playing surface of the table and the pink is placed dead center. For the green and the yellow balls, they are placed at the tips of the semicircle. So how big does that semicircle need to be? On a full size snooker table, 
That semicircle measures 585 millimeters in diameter, which is 23 inches. So there's a rule of thumb when marking your pool tables for snooker, and that is that the semicircle should be one third of the width of the table. So to be able to directly compare how these markings line up, we're going to take our full size snooker table and reduce it down so that the playing surface exactly matches our nine foot pool table. And if we overlay the two images, you can see that the height of that semicircle matches almost perfectly at one third the width of the table. You will also notice that the head string or the bulk line is not in the same position. We'll be covering that later in the video. So using the one third of the width of the playing surface rule, that will give us the following measurements for nine, eight and seven foot pool tables. So next we'll look at the final spot that we need, which is the spot for the black ball. Again, there's another rule of thumb for this, which is that it should be placed one eleventh of the total length of the playing surface uh, positioned from the rear cushion. And again, if we overlay our snooker table on top of our pool table using the same playing surface, you can see that both of the uh, black balls line up absolutely perfectly. Additionally, it's worth noting that if you draw a straight line between these targets on your pool table, it will give you this exact same position of 1 11th from the rear cushion. So let's just go back now and revisit the issue that we spotted with regards to the head string or the bulk line. So if we overlay our two images again, we can clearly see that the position of the line is completely different between our snooker table and our pool table. Remembering that on our pool table that the head string is always marked between those second set of targets. Now, unfortunately, it's just one of those things that that line is going to be in the incorrect position. And there's not much you can do about that. And most players would accept that and use their standard head string line for their snooker markings. And the only way around that issue is to have a twin set of lines, one for your standard pool head string and a second for your dedicated snooker bulk line. And this comes down entirely to personal choice. Most players will accept their standard head string line and use that, but other people may wish to go for this approach. So it's completely down to what you prefer and personal choice. And so what would be the advantage of having both a pool head string alongside a dedicated snooker bulk line? Having a dedicated snooker bulk line will enable you to have a more realistic game of snooker on your pool table. This becomes very apparent when you compare the angles, especially playing up the table towards the yellow, green or brown balls. So if you wanted to mark your pool table with twin lines, specifically for snooker and pool, how do we go about it? So on a full size snooker table, the bulk line is positioned at 29 inches from the rear cushion. Now if we run a quick calculation of taking the full length of the playing surface, 140 inches, divide that by our 29 inches, that gives us a figure of 4.827. And we can use that figure to transfer the position of this line accurately onto our pool table. So next, what we would do is we would take our total length of our playing surface of our pool table and then divide that by that same figure of 4.827 and that will give you the following lengths for the position of your dedicated snooker bulk line. So your table with its twin lines would look something like this. And if we overlay the two images, we can now see that the position of our second line is perfect. So we now know how to get all of our markings for our pool table. So your pool table, including a single head string, would look something like this one here. And if we add the balls, we can see exactly how that full setup would work. It's also worth noting that with regards to the red balls, that there is no spot required for the red balls and there is no spot on the full size snooker table. The pink has its own dedicated spot and the reds are racked up as close as possible behind the pink ball, but without physically touching it. Now to allow you to get those red balls as close as possible to the pink, there are special racks that you can buy or you can modify a standard rack as shown here. So all of our illustrations so far have been based on a nine foot pool table. But how would this setup compare on eight foot and seven foot tables, remembering that the ball size will remain the same at 2.25 inches. So as we can see, as the table size reduces, so does the playing area and therefore the balls start to get tighter together. 
and this is particularly important when you look at the gap between the red balls and the black ball. As you get down to a seven foot table, there's virtually no gap remaining, which is not really comparable to the same layout on a snooker table. However, what you can do to help combat that is to reduce the number of red balls that are played to use 10 reds instead of 15 to essentially remove that final row of red balls. And logic would dictate that another solution would be simply to buy smaller balls. However, remember that the pockets remain the same size even if you do reduce the size of the balls. So the pockets would be very large in relation to the balls, so, so potting would be made even easier and it would become an even less realistic game of snooker. So that's something to be avoided if possible. So that's it guys, that's our technical look at marking your pool table ready for snooker. So we hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, can we ask a quick favour in return? Please be sure to hit the like button. If you could hit subscribe, we have loads more great content on our YouTube channel ready for you to check out. We appreciate it. We'll see you again.